Hey everybody, Trey here. Uh, today we have an ongoing severe weather threat across southern Florida with this kind of frontal squall line we're seeing here that's moved onshore into the Florida Peninsula. It's packed a punch. It's already produced a couple of tornadoes. You can see we've got a slight risk there for far southern Florida with a 5% tornado risk from the SPC. And we've already seen a few tornadoes with this line. This one, some video from earlier near Fort Myers, Florida. You can see the power flashes there accompanying that pretty hefty tornado uh, that did some damage in Fort Myers. We also have seen one pretty stout tornado near Naples as well as you can see from this video. So uh, thought we it would be a good idea to um, kind of dive into the event while it's ongoing, kind of see how this event has evolved and why it's evolved the way it has. A couple of quick announcements before we um, begin here. Um, I've gotten a lot of good feedback from the quad state supercell, quad state tornadic supercell case study. So I'll be doing more of those here coming up uh, in the next few weeks and months uh, before st storm season really starts to kick in. And I've also gotten some feedback and some requests to do a series on soundings, how to uh, decipher soundings, how to read them. Uh, and so I'll be doing that uh, starting off this week. So if you're interested in learning more about soundings, how they work, and how to read them and decipher all these different values down here. I'll be doing a series on that kicking off this coming week, so keep an eye out for that. But for the meantime, let's take a look at the event that we've got on our hands this morning down in Florida. So let's start here um, at 500 millibars. You can see a very well-defined, uh, well, very pronounced closed trough here at 500 millibars, pretty strong winds rounding the base of that trough. Um, so pretty potent, deep digging trough. And we've talked about, you know, in the last several videos we've done, you know, I often like to see troughs for more of a discrete supercell mode to have more of a westerly component to the winds aloft. Now, this is not really the case here up in far northern Florida, down into uh, up into Georgia, but we're talking about more down here. Um, kind of in the southern Florida vicinity. However, however, as, you, as we've noted, uh, we've kind of got this squall line here anyway. Even though the wind's a little bit more westerly uh, down here in southern Florida, we have got this squall line that's forced along this cold front here. And let me actually sort of debut my new annotation tools here. But uh, here's kind of our surface map, very broad sort of surface low here kind of multi-center. We've got a few different centers here, kind of one there in kind of northern Georgia, far western North Carolina, and then one in southern South Carolina. Cold front kind of follows this pressure, tr those that pressure tongue there. So here, that is going to be our cold front. And so this convection is going to be forced all along uh, this cold front. So even though we do have a little bit more of a westerly component to the winds aloft at 500 millibars, we are seeing this mainly forced along the cold front, and therefore we've seen a little bit more of a um, sort of squall line instead of discrete supercells. Nonetheless, um, we have seen kind of embedded supercells and uh, Im embedded rotation within this line, uh, and that's because the wind shear is strong. If you recall, we've got that very strong trough here at 500 millibars. We moved down to 850 millibars. We got some strong winds there, more out of the south, kind of south-southwest here at 30 to 40 uh, knots here. And then at the surface, if we take a look at our surface map here, uh, you can kind of see that low very, very broad here. You can, it's very kind of hard to place the center in the surface data. But if we go to our southern Florida sector here, you can see the surface winds out of the south. Dew points uh, 76 over 64, 77 over 64, Miami 77 over 66. So very much a thermodynamic profile near the surface that is warranting of uh, tornadic supercells. So very strong wind shear. Now let's take a look at, at the soundings here from this morning, 12Z soundings. So here's the Tampa Bay sounding from this morning. And let me get my annotation on here. So at first glance, this doesn't look like a you know tornadic supercell sounding. If you were to just look at the instability value here, the mixed layer cape value of 232. If you just saw that, you would say, no, we're probably not going to see severe weather today. That's really not high enough to see robust convection. But in these cold season cases especially, 
and you see this a lot with cold core setups in the spring as well, that it's not necessarily the value of the instability that matters, the cape value, it's how that cape, how that instability is distributed throughout the profile. So you can see here that it is pretty much all kind of crammed down here below about 550 to 600 millibars. It's all down here below that level. So, you know, in a, it, normally if we see 232, you know, joules per kilogram of cape, we'd see very, very skinny cape throughout the profile uh, going all the way up here through maybe 300 millibars or so. But in this case, it's crammed all the below, all below about 550 millibars. So if you just look at this portion of the, of the sounding, that's pretty stout cape crammed in a very small amount of space. So this is number one gonna be low top convection. We don't see any more cape kind of above 550 millibars. So these are gonna be very low top storms with a lot of instability in the low levels. If we were to look at our um, zero to three kilometer cape, it's only 41 joules per kilogram here. If we look at our map, though, I think we would see a little bit higher. Yeah, you can see this is our vortis surface vorticity in zero to three kilometer cape here. You can see kind of all throughout this region here, um, very high instability right ahead of that frontal zone in the lowest three kilometers, coinciding with a lot of surface vorticity from that front. And we also have a very high amount of low-level shear coinciding with this high amount of instability. You can see the hodograph here in the first couple kilometers. Very solid uh, hodograph here for tornadic supercells. Effective uh, storm relative helicity approaching 500 meters squared per second squared. So because we have so much instability located down here, all of our instability is in the low levels. Um, that 232 you know, mixed layer cape is a little bit um, misleading. It's, we actually have pretty solid cape here because it's all stuffed below about 550 millibars, coinciding with this very strong shear here in the low levels. That is going to be a pretty textbook sounding for low-topped tornadic supercells. Now, again, this is not a classic setup. You're not going to see you know, 50, 60,000 foot tall thunderstorm clouds. These storms are probably going to be below about 20,000 feet. So... Um, because of that, you've got all that instability down there coinciding with the low-level shear to get a pretty classic low-topped supercell profile. Now, again, we've, we've said that the storm mode is a little bit more of a line because it's kind of being forced along the cold front. In these kind of low shear cases, it is kind of difficult to get um, discrete supercells with this much forcing. But we have seen discrete supercells here uh, with embedded supercells within the line. And, and kind of these LEWP structures or loop structures uh, for short. Um, loop stands for line echo wave pattern. And you can see how kind of wavy this line is. Um, so notice here, kind of going to just draw the front edge of the reflectivity pattern here. You can see it's very, very wavy. We've got these kinks in the lines. And a lot of times these uh, kinks in the line and a lot of times these kinks are associated with circulations. If we go back here and set this in motion, you can see kind of some of these kinks here. If we go back here, especially take a look kind of at the center of the profile, center of the screen here, you can see one right in here associated with kind of one of those kinks in the line. Some maybe broad rotation here down south, you can see kind of these embedded supercells embedded um, you know, sort of waves here in the line. We do have some discrete development perhaps out ahead of the line here, uh, kind of down by the Florida Keys, uh, heading just toward the Homestead area. Those would be storms to watch as well if they don't get overtaken by the line, which it does appear that they, they are a little bit down to the south here, but you can see that they do have some rotation with them, even though they're getting uh, kind of eaten by the line here. We do have some semi-discrete supercells, at least for now, for the next few minutes heading uh, between about um, the Florida Keys and uh, Homestead. So very interesting severe weather event today. It just shows you don't need to have, you know, two, three, four thousand cape to get robust tornadic supercells. If you've got instability, but it's all, you know, down in the lowest few kilometers of the atmosphere, coinciding with a very strong wind shear profile, just shows that you don't need massive cape uh, to get these 
severe weather to get tornadic supercells, period. So that's all I've got for now. Just wanted to do kind of a brief sort of update on the event here, kind of, you know, it's a very unique event to study. So I wanted to kind of capitalize on that while it's while the event was going on. So wouldn't be we surprised to see a few more um, spin up tornadoes here along this line um, as it marches across southern Florida. It's about to move back out over open ocean uh, in within the next hour or so. So for Florida, severe threat will be ending here within the next hour or two. Uh, but very interesting event nonetheless. So wanted to to uh, kind of you know get a little bit of a forecast discussion or ex actually you know kind of event discussion uh, as it was ongoing. So. Again, keep an eye out for my um, sounding videos this week, as well as some case study video videos that I'm working on, uh, if you're interested in those on this channel. So that's all I've got for now. Uh, thanks for watching. We will see you in the next video.